Welcome to 2024. It is officially the 1st of January. The new year is here and I am super excited for it. So in this video, let me share with you a big picture overview of what I expect for the year ahead, as well as I will try and give some big picture predictions and um, where I think prices could go, what to watch out for. So this is definitely an update that you want to watch. If you are not yet subscribed to my channel, subscribe down below. If you're not yet following my page on Instagram, follow my page down below. And I'd really appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up or a like, and um, it helps the video and the content get out to more people. So let's dive straight into the content. Starting out with the Bitcoin historic returns. Okay, so the quarter ended up closing at positive 56.9%. Q4 tends to be green, so this is no exception. We had a nice Q4. Bitcoin closed, we'll see in a second what the exact level was, but just over 42,000 for the year, which is a massive, massive change compared to how 2022 ended up going. And it basically, it was up almost 3X. The lows were in the 15,000s in 2022, and we hit just over 44,000 in 2023. So that was promising, okay? So we have now Q1, what is going to happen? Is it going to be green or red? As you can see historically, it tends to be a bit of a mixed bag, but specifically 2024, I do think we are more likely to see green than red due to the potential Bitcoin ETF approval and due to the halving, which is coming up in April of this year. So time will tell, but I am leaning towards a green Q1. The Bitcoin monthly returns December was green at plus 12.18%. And one thing that was interesting, I said back in October, because we had the September close, it was green. And one thing that I recognized here, this pattern, is that when we had a green September, you can see here in 2015, 2016, those were the only two times here on this chart that it was green, they were followed by three consecutive green months, both those times. So back in October, after we had the September close, I said, could this pattern be repeating? And indeed it did. We had a green September and we had three consecutive green months after that. So that was an interesting thing to know and that is why it pays to look at data find these patterns, identify these things. It is not a guarantee that it happens again, but the more examples you can find of a specific pattern or correlation that has happened in the past, the higher of a probability it can be when that same setup occurs again, what is the outcome um, that has happened in the past? Does that make it more likely that it happens again? And this time it did. So let's see what we get in this January. This January is going to be key also because we are going to have to wait and see, do we actually get an ETF approval? Some people are speculating that by January 10th, before that date, we will already get an ETF approval, but there are basically uh, deadlines going all the way through for the next few months. So it's going to be interesting to see what do we get and when do we get that approval. In my opinion, the sooner we get it, the more likely it is that we get a front run scenario. So if we get this approved, for example, before January 10th, it is more likely in my opinion that prices continue going up until April or May in a big way and that that potentially sets the peak if prices around about that time um, are above uh, the previous all time high. So if we're above 70,000 by April or May, we have the ETF approved. In my opinion, it becomes more likely that the cycle may have peaked. And if we don't get that approval um, and the prices aren't anywhere near that, then obviously the scenario and the probabilities change and we adjust as the charts develop. All right, so Bitcoin is currently trading at 42,474 as I'm making this video. Before I get into the analysis and the prediction, let's take a look at what I said on December 1st with my update then. Again, I will say the same thing. If you are bearish, what are you basing it on? Because this chart looks bullish, okay? There's nothing bearish about this chart. Look at this, we have had three massive green monthly candles. Um, we're in a bullish trend. We're making higher highs, we're making higher lows. We're above all the key moving averages, above the 50 here in monthly, above the 50 and 200 on weekly, I'll show you in a second. And this trend is simply bullish, so I don't know why anyone is bearish on this. But the trend is bullish, and in my opinion, you should be long until invalidation and that invalidation comes when we get a close back below for example the 50 week moving average which i'll show you in a second the target still here is what i said in the last video these highs um fibonacci golden pocket so between 48 and 53 thousand and how long it's going to take to get there um ultimately we'll only see in hindsight i do suspect it'll probably take like two to three months just based on the velocity of, of how the trend's been going 
Um, but of course, anything is possible. I mean, if we see an ETF approved, you know, maybe we get a green candle like this, and maybe we see a massive green candle, and we hit that in January. It's completely possible. All right. So Bitcoin in that previous video on December first was still around thirty-eight thousand, and I said this trend is bullish, long till wrong, and the target is forty-eight to fifty-three thousand. Look, we hit. Uh, what did we hit? The high was forty-four thousand seven hundred. Okay. So again. That was right. The trend lead the way. The charts lead the way. The trend was bullish. We're at 38. We went up six and almost six and a half thousand dollars since that previous video on December 1st. Currently, we're sitting at 42,000. And basically, the same concept applies. The same uh, principles that I just said on December 1st. Okay, the trend is bullish. We are in a strong bullish high time frame trend, and that means the target is upside until invalidation. So you can see we have four green monthly candles. This is a, just a very strong bullish trend. We are above all the key moving averages on monthly, on weekly, on three day. And again, why would you want to be bearish on this? This is simply just long until wrong, long until invalidation and that invalidation below the three day 50 moving average, which is currently I'll show you a bit later around about $32,000. As long as we're above there, the targets are higher. And in my opinion, still what I said, this Fibonacci golden pocket. Okay. This, uh, these highs over here. So between 48 and 53,000, we are now in January. If we get that ETF approval, I could see us going straight to 53,000 potentially this month. Okay. If, if that gets approved, I think it'll see such an influx and it will be just a really, really bullish event. And if we can flip that 0 0.70, that 53 K, then we could indeed potentially be by the, the all time highs by the time of the halving in about April, right? So that's, three and a half months of upside. That is not crazy because look what it he did here in the last three months. It went from 30 to 65. Okay. So if that repeats, assuming, you know, we are in this front run cycle, we're smack in the middle of the bull market and we get that upside continuation fueled by an ETF fueled by the anticipation of the halving, we could see a 30 to $50,000 move within the next three to four months. And that would indeed take us to the, the all time high of 70,000 or maybe even beyond it. Um, and that kind of lines up with what is my prediction for the year? Well, that is what I'm leaning towards so far, potentially a peak in April or in May of this year. And that is very much based on if the price is up at those levels by that time. Okay, so that is a big condition here. We obviously continue to follow the charts, but I am looking for a peak in Bitcoin somewhere between 70 and $90,000 um, by potentially April or May. If we get the ETF approval, um, hopefully as early as possible in January, and we get that massive run up, this will also probably be seen in risk assets. Okay, you will see the stock market go higher. You'll probably see gold and silver go higher. You will see the dollar index go a bunch lower they all work in correlation like that. So if all those factors line up and indeed it is somewhere between 70 and 90,000 could be higher, of course, depending on how crazy things get. Um, if, if that plays out, then I would start to get cautious. And of course, always, um, it's going to depend on the charts at that point in time, the charts lead the way, as I've shown you over the months, over the years on this channel. And what I'm looking for is simply on the lower timeframes, or lower, not the monthly. I'm looking on the weekly, I'm looking on the three day chart, and even lower than that for the closest possible entry, I will look for market structure break um, in this trend, meaning potential signals of the bullish trend exhausted and uh, being, uh, being broken to the downside. Um, other technical factors such as um, RSI divergences on the higher time frames, key moving average breaks, and so on and so forth. I will do that more in detail. Um, obviously, as time progresses, and all of that will be shared in my VIP membership in the group in the discord, I will update there in real time as much as possible. If you are not yet a member, the link is in the description down below. If you want to join us 60 day money back guarantee. So there's no risk. And that is where you get all these real time technical updates as much as possible. So it is worth joining if you are not in there yet. And you can see one thing that is interesting here is we just had a golden cross here also on the weekly. So the 50 went back up through the 200. This can be a long term a bullish signal, but at the same time on the weekly, I don't pay too much attention to it because we had that death cross and it just ended up being reversed again by a golden cross on the weekly. Um, the movement of these MAs is so slow that these crosses are basically uh, 
negligible in my opinion anyway so what we have here as long as we are above both the 50 and the 200 with price action the trend is bullish and we have that upside parabolic potential like we do over here it was above there we had the 2017 bull market here we were above both we had the entire bull market and here we are above it so it won't be strange if we do something like this and indeed have that entire bull market above here like I said um, just now, between 70 and 90,000 is my guess. It could go a bunch higher. Let's see how that plays out. But that is what I'm watching for. And as long as we are above these moving averages, then the trend is bullish. The invalidation comes when we drop back below. So you can see over here, we drop back below it. That was invalidation. You can see over here, we drop below the moving average and then we get the downside. Now, of course, on the weekly, that is a very delayed, okay? So even if you would have gotten out there, you would have still saved yourself a bunch of money to the downside if you just gotten out below the 50 week moving average, but you already took a lot of drawdown by only focusing on that. And that is why we zoom into the lower time frames. So we drop down to the three day chart over here and you can see it gives you a better, sharper exit because these MAs are in a lower time frame, so they are closer to the price rather than being based on the weekly or the monthly where they take forever to move. So you can see here, you could have gotten a better exit um, at the three day chart over here um, when it dropped below. So as long as we are above this three day 50 MA, which is currently at 33,000, um, as the price is above there, it continues to increase and move higher every three days, okay? So that is a good thing to watch. This is a very, very easy way to see when there is potential danger for a trend reversal. So we are now at 42,000. Anything, any drop until 33,000 is still okay. A drop below this three day 50 moving average and that starts to give caution for the overall high time frame market direction. And again, even if you would have gotten out, you would have still saved yourself probably 50% um, of the drawdown that follows by getting out when the price goes below that three day 50 moving average or by hedging, okay? You don't need to sell everything if you take an equal short position with futures and obviously that is risky. There is liquidation risk. So you can only do that if you know what you're doing. But at the same time, you know, if you have say for example, a hundred thousand dollar long position, you can hedge that by taking an equal hundred thousand dollar short position when it breaks below that three day 50 moving average and still have your spot, but still be hedged to that downside. If, uh, if it does continue lower. So that is basically the summary here on the Bitcoin chart. Okay, I am expecting higher, we are bullish. As long as we're above 33,000, the trend is higher. And I'm expecting the initial target between 48 and 53,000, which could be hit in January if we get ETF approval. And if that continues, then we could potentially see between 70 and $90,000 by around April or May by the time of the halving. And depending on how things are looking at that point in the time, the charts, et cetera, et cetera, that might potentially be the peak of the bull market cycle. But if Bitcoin goes to 90,000 by April, we are going to see insane upside on many altcoins. And that is where the opportunity is. We're gonna see 10, 20, 30, 50 X on altcoins, not all of them, but that potential will be there if Bitcoin moves that high that fast, in my opinion. So let's take a look at Ethereum. We still have a bit of time for that. And then I'm gonna wrap up this video. So Ethereum is at 22,800, had a nice green close. This is also just like Bitcoin in a bullish trend. You can see here on the monthly chart, how nicely the 50 MA on the monthly has held as support and we are bouncing up. Okay, we are moving higher. We have broken above these highs and we are here now, this is good. So as long as the price now stays above $2,050 on ETH, I expect the next upside target to be the FIB golden pocket here, these highs over here, somewhere around uh, 3,300 to 3,700. And again, I do expect that to be hit fairly quickly. If Bitcoin does make a massive move to above 50,000 this month, we could probably see ETH follow either this month or next month, and maybe be at that FIB golden pocket um, by around 3,000 or higher. And again, if it does repeat, the 2020 price action, you can see what happens if you copy this and you move it across. If this moves, right, look how high it can move. We could also be back then at all time highs. So that was just shy of $5,000. Um, my target for ETH this year for this cycle, if this plays out in this way, would be somewhere between, uh, I would say six and $8,000. I would guess that is kind of a realistic estimate based on this front run scenario and depending on when it happens, 
Um, if it plays out like this by April or May, uh, that could potentially also be the peak like I've been talking about. And you can see here, this would be about 6,400. This would be mimicking the previous 2020, 2021 price action over here. And you can see, um, depending on how fast that would move, I don't know if it's gonna do this double peak thing again that it did in 2021, maybe not, okay? Maybe it just goes straight up, one parabolic move, and then moves down. But you can see here, this would be by about May, April or May, it is possible, okay? It's possible based purely on previous price action, what it has already done. So it is going to depend on the money flow, the liquidity flow. ETF approval is going to play a big role in whether or not this scenario plays out, in my opinion. And then, uh, of course, the dollar index needs to continue going lower. As long as that is the case, the dollar index goes down. Then we see risk assets, we see crypto go up, precious metals, probably uh, forex pairs against the US dollar. And that would be this scenario. And if this plays out and it does peak in April or May, I do expect a major bear market after this bull cycle is complete, coinciding potentially with the first Fed rate cuts, which are expected as soon as in March of this year. And that is nothing to be scared about because that would mean that if I'm right about all of this, what I've said, there is massive upside in the next three to five months where you could make insane gains, 10, 20, 30, 50 X on altcoins. And then if you play your cards right, you know that that peak is going to be there based on the technicals at the time, et cetera, et cetera. Then you can realize those gains, get out of the market, and you can actually even short this on the way down because if you know how to trade and you know how these markets work, it is possible to short them and make just as much to the downside as there is to the upside. But for now, let's see how this plays out. Let's see if we get that ETF approval. We will know very soon in the next days and weeks. And I am very excited for the year ahead. So I want something from you right now. Before I wrap up this video, before you close this page or browse to the next one, leave a comment down below. What do you think the all-time high that Bitcoin is going to hit this year? What do you think is your highest price point? And the same for Ethereum. Drop the comments down below. It will be fantastic to look back on this a year from now again and see what people's predictions were and how that ends up uh, playing out. So let me know what your thoughts are real quick in the comments. Bitcoin and Ethereum, what do you think the highest levels are going to be that they're going to hit? I wish you a very happy, healthy, prosperous, and awesome new year. Make sure to smash the like button, follow my page, and I will see you in the next video.